not a hard kick to play safe behind, but you could also kiss the two in from kicking behind off the one. I think I might shoot the eight into the two here, try and hold for that kick shot. Okay, so we are going to leave the action on table two there. If you want to keep watching that match, you can do so on the Matchroom Multisport YouTube. Jeremy, you're going to stay on, and I will leave you in the hands of Phil Yates for the next match on the main table. Good look at Carlo Viado. One of the world's finest players and holds so many titles. One of the few that holds the World Nine Ball and the US Open. The two biggest in our sport. Big favorite in this match, but this is the second round. Sean has got the, a wind under his belt. Certainly a man that's going to play with a little confidence, hope for some early opportunities, and something to get going. Jeremy Biardo breaking and you get the impression he might be doing a lot of that in this match. Does a lot of that in every match it seems like. And good to have you back Phil. Miss you at the US Open. I said it earlier in our commentary the first match me and Michael of course Steve did a did a great job over there for a first timer in the pool scene and, and Scott Frost I thought uh, he did real well also of course you're always busy. <laughs> yeah, I really miss the, the US Open. It's one of those things I was at the, the British Open snooker in, in Cheltenham, which is not uh, alike with <laughs> Atlantic City, two very different places. But uh, yeah, I really miss the, the biggest event of the year. But what a performance from Koping Chung. What a performance. Yeah, absolutely. And there were many stories at that U.S. Open, like there always is, and such an historic event. But I feel like it could have only been better with you there. It was a great event. Well, we're back in the saddle, as they say, Jeremy. That's right. And so is Carlo Piatto. Carlo, of course, going to play it like it's the final. It's just how the type of professional he is. And I don't know a great deal about Trung, but I'm sure Carlo has a clue. And of course, like I said, he's won a match already, so can't, can't overlook. Nice kick shot there to hold the cue ball. Maybe a little fortunate catch in the point. Should be the short cue maybe here for Carlo. Now I've been speaking to our Vietnamese TV crew here who are doing a, a wonderful job behind the scenes. And they tell me, I hope I get this right, it's N <coughs> Quan Chung. Maybe not even Trung, but let's just say that's the way it's spelled for us. Yeah, Nook like that, I believe, is how NGO is. And of course, Ng is a bit more popular name uh, known around the world, just NG. But I think you add the O, it, it changes a little bit. Yeah, I think if you add another O, it's no go. And if Carlo Biondo plays his best in terms of getting through to the next round, it might well be no go for the local. But we'll see how he fares. Well, I mean, I think you're going to see a lot of great players in the next five, six years from this country. And many reasons I think that the pool bug is there. The nine ball bug is in place. And everyone that was really at the event at the Perry Open was so young and there were you know, such enthusiastic fans you got to believe uh, the numbers are there and most all of them play and if that three ball he just knocked in is any indication a very very good stroke 
already had a match today, came through the first round against a fellow countryman. 9-4. You had a lot of work here with these last five balls. Anytime you have the sixth ball here and he can't get above it, so he's got to play a difficult shot down the rail, but he has to ha carry angle on it, which makes the shot more difficult so he can get position on the brown seven. And I tell you, I think these t t tables are starting to rear their teeth here, even on day one. So very demanding shot here on the green six. Kind of rearing up here like he's going to put a lot of power. Wow, he went all the way to the top rail with the cue ball. I thought we'd see a little bit more of a stun just getting over on the seven. Carlo Piotto in great position now to take game one. Yeah, the young Vietnamese beat Tran Trung Trey 9-4 in the first round, but coming up against Biardo is an entirely different and some might say daunting prospect. Yeah, he may come across just mildly track. Okay, he played for a heavy angle, so that means he's gonna come two rails behind the eight. Or at least that's what you figure. There are so many potential winners of this title come Sunday night. And you have to put Biardo on the shortlist. No, oh, absolutely. I mean. Oh, but he's missed the seven ball there. Yeah, a little, little, little quick with it, maybe. First game, and that's how that, that happens a lot. But I mean, he's always a threat no matter what part of the world we're in. But, I mean, not far from the Philippines here. And I think that does play into things. If you've been with us all day, you will have noticed a common theme. Pretty much the opening rack in every match has been mistake ridden and you've seen players struggle to get used to conditions immediately. Even the greats. Yeah. Billy just played on this this table here and he said it got a little warm, the conditions over there for him. Of course, I think there were some other things to do with him getting warm. I thought he was playing a little fast around the table, and of course your adrenaline's going, and if you're rushing a little bit, I think you tend to get it going even more. And now Carlo Beato, no doubt, going to clean these three up. Yeah, meat and drink for him. I've got a theory about Billy Thorpe and about Shane Walford, which I'm going to share with you, Jeremy, when this nine ball goes in. 1-0 to Biardo. With the US Moscone Cup points situation being so tight and it being wide open as to who plays on the team, and let's face it, on the best USA team now for years, I think those Americans on the bubble will be under more pressure than anyone in this building all week until they're knocked out, of course. And there's a, a parallel. You know, you talk to golfers on the European tour and the old guys, the veterans from South Africa and Australia, they used to say, we loved Ryder Cup here because all of the European players were under pressure to make the team and quite often the South Africans, the Australians, the New Zealanders and players from outside Europe used to take advantage of that by winning lots of tournaments because the other guys were under that extra layer of pressure. And maybe that's the case here this week as well. Opponents of the likes of Thorpe and Walford will find that their, their rivals are wanting it so badly. Maybe they'll take advantage of that. Yeah, and I think, you know, to be, to be fair about it, I mean, with that breaking news yesterday... I think that adds maybe not more pressure because I think the pressure's there already, but maybe, you know, just a curveball a little bit that uh, they didn't expect, and, and uh, I completely understand it. Um, but again, you know, that's why the training is so important that way because anything that comes up, you can really start to rely on your process and whatnot. And, you know, you think about it, I mean, the Euros have been under that pressure a lot the last few years of players on the bubble and so many that potentials making it, right? 
But, I, you know, anything that's tough, well, you know the saying, if it doesn't kill you, it only makes you better. As regular listeners of our commentary know, myself and Jeremy love our baseball. And I think the addition of Fedor Korsht is a little bit like having a really good lineup, with three, four, five. Right. This is a one, two, three strike force. You've got Skylar Woodward and Fedor there, and we all know Shane Van Boning is going to play. And that is a, a phenomenal strike force potentially to hit the Europeans with. So the other guys who are playing for a place, the likes of Tyler Steyer and we just mentioned Walford, Billy Thorpe and the like, before they were playing on a team that was hoping to win, now they're playing for a place on a team that's got a wonderful chance to win. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, if you just think about, you know, something special to get out, to be able to be hanging out with Shane and getting those, getting those, uh, you know, tips here and there. And if you're paying attention, it doesn't have to be tips. He's telling you, you just get them anyways. And I think the same thing's going to happen with Fetter. And I tell you, these pockets are, are tough for day one. They are indeed. Playing for a place in winner's qualification, of course, this. shot there and it's going to be a difficult hit here on the blue two. May tie the two seven up here and surrender ball in hand trying to improve his situation on the next. Right, he's going to play the curve shot can't get a ton of speed on this. Got to hope something goofy happens and maybe it has. Speaking of baseball, it's heating up. It's playoffs. There's nothing better in playoff baseball besides an iron ball pool, of course. Well, I have a real bonus this morning, Jeremy, because of the jet lag. I woke up very, very early in the hotel. Flicking through the, the channels, and it was a Japanese channel showing the second game of the Braves Phillies series. So that was. A real bonus for me. The only problem was I had to leave at the eighth, and of course I didn't see all the drama with the Braves coming back to win it. Yeah, I tell you, it's uh, watching online. Of course, people have different comments about different things, but and that Braves team is one of the best regular seasons. Really, just you know, just incredible that team they sustained. You know, we saw the Rays have. I don't, I don't know if it's the best start ever in baseball, but it was one of them. Very hard to sustain. The Orioles overtook them, and, but the Braves, uh, the Braves have been incredible. But when you draw one of your division rivals, you throw everything out the window when it comes to playoff time, in my opinion. And I think that's the case in that series. Now back to the nine-ball pool. Doesn't want to open this three-seven. That could be a little bit of a protection here. Great effort. Now we'll see how good Carlos feeling. Look, I think the three seven is a, a playable combination in top right. So I'm sure Carlo will recognize that that's on. And if so, doesn't really have to work the cue ball back on this end of the table. Can just cut the two in, go back and forth, and and take on that three seven. And I'm almost a hundred percent you can make it. What even though you may have to throw it a bit. Now if he doesn't like it, he may cue. Try and come back and forth and break them out. Yeah, the three seven is definitely playable. That's why I said when you recognize a combination like this, you don't have to get close to it. Now this is where when you're talking about two balls frozen and they're going to throw, it's all about speed, but also we're in damp conditions. So damp conditions can make some strange things happen on shots like this, like maybe get too much throw on the ball. Really nice. Oh, I think the green six may get him here. This needs to travel. Right, may have opened up. No, he's definitely snookered. Of course, I always talk about Spaniards, FSR and David Alcady being two of the best with the rail first shot, but maybe. 
the Filipinos all in all as a whole are the best ever. Maybe the ones that, that really kind of perfected the rail first shot. A real good opportunity now. First real good one for Nook. see the experience of all hanging right difficult to play the speed and contact get the line right oh, did really well really nice so many unknown quantities in this tournament many of them hailing from right here in Vietnam Uh, seems like unknown even though the names seem to come out with the Filipino players but I was so impressed with so many young names from the Philippines I saw at the Perry Open that I really didn't know or heard of even and uh, seemed like they're all quality even though same with Feliciano even though he wasn't one of the younger Filipinos going to fluke the eight here Well, there's one thing about having a fluke. You have to take advantage, and that was a really good pot on the six. Yeah, and I like him backing off here, stretching a little bit. Make, when you make a big shot, it's easy to get down and just kind of overlook what you're doing, and just like a, when you make a kind of a poor shot. So. Well, there you go. Big cheers. And... The rack is on the board. So Carlo Biardo pegged back. Plenty of big names in action right now on table two on the Matrium Multisport YouTube channel. David Alcady, 2 1 up against a, a tough opponent, Jeffrey Aroda from the Philippines. When Antoine has beaten JJ 4 9 1. Michael Feliciano come through 9 3 against Michael Yednak. Lee Van Cortese cut it fine against Wynn Fook Long, but he came through 9 8 anyway. Skylar Woodward on the hill against Julian Serradia of Switzerland. Now, the winner of this match will take on either James Aranas or Pierre Francesco Garcia in the next round. Aranas leading that one narrowly 5 4. Masato Yoshioka 6 2 up on Max Eberly. And it's a 5-3 lead for Fedor Gorscht over Marvin Assis. John Mora on the hill also against Win Huang Nat. Tell you, you know, Michael, we were talking about our picks for the tournament. He did he wants me to pick a non-American to see who I, I like and actually got lucky at the US Open and picked the winner but I thought he would be down in it anyways but he brought up a name right there I picked Ayuki Oi for this event but I think John Moore may be another one of those makes a real deep run he's really been playing well played well at the Perry I think which is going to bode well and also lead into another subject that you know we've seen Skylar had a great year right but he struggled early in almost every one of these tournaments the first or second match I don't think any coincidence that he's coming off stronger here the first or second match because he came early for the Perry Open and really got, got himself acclimated uh, to this side of the world. I think that's very important for the players to remember. Very hard to show up the day before <laughs> coming halfway around the world and play your best pool. Even if you feel good, you don't realize you know how taxing it is. Oops. <laughs> by the eight but that kind of hook for a Filipino 
is entirely routine. Carlo Biardo, you know, has got very good memories of playing pool here in Vietnam. He's won three gold medals in the Southeast Asian Games, representing the Philippines, of course. And one of those was collected here in 2021. Well, I forget uh, which Filipino player I saw it was saying they won a tournament here some 12 years ago. That was the last time they were there here in Vietnam. And trying to remember who it was. I kind of thought it was Carlo, but now that you said that, it certainly wasn't. Okay, so Nick kind of putting a few safeties together, trying to produce a shot. Now he's got another on a 1-3 combo. Kind of ball you'd like to drag in if possible. And Southeast Asian Games gold medal was in 2021, definitely. It was in 10 ball, and he overcame Yuan Chua, his fellow countryman in the final. Not just in Vietnam, right here in Hanoi. Yeah, I heard an outside rumor that Efren may show his face here this week. Well, I've heard that rumor also. Wouldn't that be something? Yeah, I mean, that would... Uh how to bring them all out. I mean, they're all going to come out anyways. That just may bring them out earlier. After the shot, Jeremy, I'm going to give you some good news. The aforementioned Scarlett Woodward is through. He's beaten Julian Siradia of Switzerland 9-3. Yeah, and Skyler played well at the parry. He was in position to advance and soon to be inducted Hall of Famer. Neil's fan really... Uh, Made an incredible comeback. I think Skyler was up 7-0. And then ended up losing that match. I believe it was 10-8. And Niels, of course, played a great match in the next. And just had, had one shot he'd like to have back towards the end of the match, or else he may have been in that final on the parry. So after seeing his opponent equalize, I think that's the best rack that Biardo has played in the, the match so far. He leads 2-1. Masato Yoshioka, who's a coach in his native Japan, he's teaching Max Eberle a lesson, you could say, on table four, leading 6-2. Fedor Gorsh lead over Marvin Assis is now 6-3. James Aranas and Pierre Francesco Garcia, they're locked together at 5-5 right now. It's been a great day for Damien Massey of the UK. He's 6-0 up on Ma Pham Kongbang. Moritz Neuhausen wasn't feeling too well at the US Open. He was telling me yesterday he was suffering from dizzy spells and didn't feel right at the table at all. He's still not 100%. But he feels much better, and maybe that's reflected in the fact he's 4-1 up on table 8 against Nizam Udin. Alex Kazakis, former World Masters champion, he's 7-1 up against Ali Percival of the UK. Yeah, well, that's the break-off he'd like to the entire week of course we know that can happen but once you start to feel that sweet spot you kind of think you can do somewhat the same quite often of course the pool balls don't always agree but now in a great position and, and I think these tables are going to get really difficult as we go so 
and Carlo doesn't bother doesn't bother him at all really any conditions he plays under now a little bit straight so he's going to have to take on more on the five to get to the six than maybe he wanted so he's drawn back to take a really heavy cut here or is he going to really draw the ball looks like it'll be short side from the five to the six Jeremy on the conditions. He's one of the great adapters, isn't he? Adjusts, fights, understands the the different way tables play, and he can cope with anything that's thrown at him in terms of conditions and opposition. <laughs> yeah, unfortunate nudge there, mind you. Yeah, I think it would have been a little unfortunate not to come away with something just because the six was tough. So you got to simplify it a little bit. The seven pretty open. But I think any any players that are raised under tough conditions, they seem to adapt to different conditions a little bit better. I mean, where I'm from was very difficult conditions, always tough tables, tight pockets, a lot of humidity. The same in the Philippines. Did he fluke it? It wasn't an absolute gimme, but they're the kind of balls you fully expect someone of Carlo Biardo's stature to knock in. It's been a common feature on this table all day, though. Lots and lots of balls have been missed. Yeah, a tough one to roll on the side. Probably the proper shot, though. That way you can hold position on the nine. It's kind of a little bit elevated, but not really hitting down on the ball too much. Yeah, he's got to just take it off. I'll tell you, I think he's got to just take it on the side. Ooh, he's going to play safe. If he's doing anything, what I think by measuring that out, he's thinking of double banking the eight to the top rail as he brings the cue ball one rail back down by the nine. Not a bad shot. Oh, now he's really elevated on the ball, so. Well, if you're going to play safe, you've got to get it safer than that. Yeah. I don't think the cross-side bank was what he was really going for. I think he was trying to get the eight in a more difficult position and the cue ball down on the top of the short rail. May draw this. Look, just get past the side one rail. Don't you don't have to get all the way back down, and that makes the shot a lot easier. Well, there was one error. The missed eight ball, but when he got his second chance, Biardo stepped in, so he leads by three racks to one. What a, an early birthday present this would be for him. He celebrates a milestone birthday at the end of the month. He will turn 40. There's the eight and the nine. That was just a, a wee bit tricky. The man who's had a, a wonderful career, highlighted by, well, you could say he's gold medal in the 2017 World Games. I would say the fact he's a former World Nine Ball champion and a former US Open champion as well, beating Aloysius Yap in the final in 2021. Yap looked really good going into that match, but Biardo had his measure. Yeah, and he had a pretty decent lead, I believe, if I remember correctly, also. and. Yeah, just kind of took apart everyone in that tournament. And I would say there for a little bit, we kind of overlooked Carlo in that event. I, at least I did until we got to like the final eight. But you talked about that landmark birthday at 40 years old. Of course, we know Shane Van Moning turned 40 this year. And 
he'll certainly be the one carrying that green jacket next next year. But um, I think it'll be Carlo after that, or at least be one of the odds-on favorites. It was an absolutely fantastic break. The one went in, which is what you always want. Simple pot on the two to get position on the three to get position on the four. When I'm commentating with Jeremy, I'm always rationed the amount of roadmaps I can say. So I'm not going to use my roadmap up here because it isn't one, but it's still a very, very good layout. Yeah, well, I think the pockets that we're playing on for the most part on the World Nine Ball Tour, at least the bigger events, uh, kind of make that roadmap saying a little far and few, fewer between. I think the informal agreement, Jeremy, is I'm allowed one every two days. Oh, so there you go. I'm not going to use it for this one. It's probably in the rule book, huh? I'll tell you a story about yeah. rationing mentions at the end of this racket. It's an unwritten agreement I've got with a very good commentary friend of mine. Biardo has not been at his best so far, but you can just see, bear in mind this is his first match after a walkover in the first round. You can just see he's getting into his stride. Yeah, and getting a little more speedy around the table, feeling pretty good. And I think this table, you know, you know how we talk about the tables have to settle in a little bit. And usually every night the, the technical people will adjust the tables, get them better. I think this table's had a little bit of a roll which I don't think has caused a ton of misses, but maybe got the cue ball out of line a little bit more from time to time. So basically, in terms of rationing commentary mentions, one of my best pals in terms of snooker commentary is a, a gentleman, I'll use that word correctly, gentleman called Neil Folds. And Neil holds the record for the highest break in professional snooker without winning the frame. He made an 80 break way back when. 10 reds, 10 blacks. Took on a, a cheeky red because he was going for a 147, thinking the match was, or the frame was out of reach because there was only 67 points left on the table. He missed the red. His opponent, the late great Willie Thorne, got the snookers he needed, cleared up and won the frame. So Neil holds that unwanted record, the highest break when you didn't actually win the frame. And I'm allowed to mention that once a year. Okay. I haven't used it yet this year, by the way. So, so it's over with now? Yeah, it's, well, yeah, I can, I can, I'm allowed to mention it. In snooker, point. you mean? Yeah, yeah. in snooker. Yeah. Uh-oh. I mean, Ooh, sorry there, Phil. thought we were going to see a golden break. Don't recall one on this table yet today? No, definitely not, no. Boy, that one looked real good for a moment. And another great break off. The two goes in the side. The three near. You can see the four and five not far. I think the two goes, but he's got to elevate. So this isn't easy. Remember, the side gives you no room, really, for error. You know, he's not a classical cumin, is he? But he gets the job done. And he knows the game inside out. Yeah, and it's, you know, you know, one of the reasons the Filipinos, uh-oh, this could need a little rub here to get a shot. He wanted to make sure he didn't catch the eight. He just didn't hit the ball very well as far as the, the line of the cue ball. But the Filipino players, one reason they're so, so great, of course, they have so many vets there that help the players. And, you know, they, maybe they help them by beating them a little bit at times, but they all start young. And uh, most of those little things, like Carlo, he always cues on the left side of the ball, and then he comes back to where he wants. You know, so some of those things you wouldn't necessarily teach in a perfect world, but, you know, like golf, there's so many things those golfers do a little different, but at impact, it seems like a lot of them are very, very similar. And it's the same, it's the same with the great players in pool. If he does lose this rack, he was the architect of his own downfall with that poor positional shot. Crank trunk has 
has the chance here to recover to 4-2. And a very good chance it is to boot. We've already seen him knocking some nice ones. That six ball to get himself on the board, really. Carlo had made a couple runs, so now a chance to cut it to 4-2. Ball's in the open, just got to, again, pay attention to every shot on what I think are not only getting a little difficult, going to get much more difficult as we move through this week at the Hanoi Open. Been to Vietnam before, Bill? First time here. Been to Thailand many times for snooker, many, many times. But yeah, my first time here and the impressions are very good indeed. Yeah, well, the food and the, it's been excellent. The people have been even better. The scooters are something to see in the streets. And, and yeah, unfortunate. These, these beautiful countries are so far away from America. But I'll tell you what, definitely recommend to anyone you can get to Hanoi and enjoy yourself. And I'll tell you what, the young Vietnamese player there enjoyed that rack. So Carlo Biardo made a positional misjudgment, hooked himself, and the indirect consequence was a chance which was taken. 4-2. Now how about James Aranas? One half of the Filipino World Cup winning pairing with Yohan Chur. Well, Aranas finds himself 7-5 down against Pierre Francesco Garcia. As I mentioned before, the winner of that match, which is taking place over on table 22, will play the winner of this one in winner's qualification. <laughs> Fedor Gorscht inexorably moving towards the winning line against Marvin Assis at 7-3 the undefeated run the unblemished run of Damien Massey continues he's now 7-0 up on my fam Kong Bang all right a little bit of a thin hit on the one usually gives us not as much movement on the rack it's only a couple balls up table I'm not sure if Carlo can get at the one but certainly let us know by his reaction to this break and what he has left. One thing about Carlo Beato, of course, there's all kinds of great players, and when you talk about his level and so many others, they're very similar, but he's just one of those players that knows how to close, knows how to get it done. And that's really the big difference in the amount of titles he has compared to some others. I would say, and this is a comparative weakness, not an actual weakness. Maybe sometimes when he's potting from distance, he's not entirely mustered, but that was a cracking pot. Yeah, absolutely. And then the miss on the two follows. Not entirely with it yet. Yeah. and. Uh, it seems like all those things get better as he moves through the tournament. And of course, that may be an obvious statement, but I'm not talking about just, I'm talking about more of what you said right there, the long pot and, uh, and, and avoiding some, some simple misses. Oh, nice shot there. Very good speed control. It's going to land near the rail with the cue ball, but he is going to get an angle. see kind of a funny seven ball I don't know if it goes by the not the eight that's later in the rack but we may end up seeing a seven nine combination to end this rack I'll tell you what pretty confident stroke this may have gotten kind of treacherously near a scratch I think he can avoid it Think it's much of a problem. Would have liked just a, a touch more speed on the cue ball there. He's quite 
thin on the five, as you can see, but it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Yeah. Normally, when you have a problem here, you kind of under hit it. Realize you can put a little more speed than what it looks like usually. Get a little better contact on the purple five. And this is what I was talking about. Unless the seven doesn't go by the eight, this is kind of a goofy situation. Very difficult to get position, and it could be a combination to get to get on the board again and cut this lead. Jeremy a while ago the seven nine combination which is coming up right now yeah it looks perfect position because anytime they're close you have to cut the ball a lot say the cue ball's out of line you can get a little friction a little bit of a kick on the ball you can tell he's got some fans out there no Quang Trung he was in a little bit of trouble when he trailed 4-1 now prospects are looking considerably brighter and the face of Carlo Biardo is looking sterner the score is 4-3 now I'm not saying Biardo is doing this Jeremy but I'm going to ask you this question during your lengthy and very successful career did you ever take a lesser known and unknown opponent for granted and regretted it <coughs> yeah I wouldn't say it was so conscious you know maybe um, but me I, I don't know I rarely went to a tournament. Uh, I say that. I mean, it happened. But I rarely went to a tournament not prepared, meaning I tried to practice. And, and the way I practiced was very hard, just like I was in a match. So it was easy for me to fall into my own zone and forget about my opponent totally. I b believed in that. But, yeah, it happens to all of us. Yeah, 100%. So. And I think maybe where it happened to me a few times was – even deeper in the tournament, I know this sounds crazy, and watch out for the cue ball, but against a player that was a good player, obviously, because they were deep in the tournament, but I felt like I was in a much more seasoned position. Like, I expected them to make mistakes because of the moment they were in, and maybe it was the first time they were in the semifinal of a big tournament or something like that. So maybe not always. I kind of – I looked at the ones where I felt like I was a big favorite, that was the time to really work on my process and really get it myself in, in the kind of mental state I wanted to be in to win the event. And clearly, Biardo, if that answers at all, the no, question, it does. Yeah, but clearly, but Biardo here is not as sharp as he should be mentally. The the carom there didn't work out. The six is over the pocket. The one available for his rival. Or at least it was. Yeah, does he play the one nine combo here with a big little bit of a big pocket? He can certainly make the one. So I bet he unless he's worried about the cue ball here, I gotta believe he's gonna try and run out instead of playing the combination. Combos though, I mean it's there. You'll notice how he's always queuing a little on the left side of the ball, kind of like Bustamani, not as severe. Oh, he did play the combo. He caught it very thick. Yeah. You expected to maybe catch a little piece of the pink, but he caught quite a bit of it. <coughs> Tell you one thing, though, and this has pretty much always been the case, but maybe even more so now, the fall schedule in nine ball pool is taxing. I mean, it is a lot of traveling, a lot of work, and a lot of high-stress tournaments as well, meaning events that can make a career and can change your career a little bit sponsor-wise and whatnot, maybe maybe the Moscone Cup. Um, so, you know, if you just look at what these players have done, um, kind of globetrotting around the world the last uh, month or so, two months, and, you know, it's easy to lose your sorts a little bit from match to match. Yes, and it doesn't end here because there's other events coming up down the line, such as the International Open. Yeah, there's a great ranking event at uh, Shane Wolford's uh, parents' pool room there in Roanoke right before uh, the International, also right there in Virginia, which you'll see a very class field. A 
I'll tell you a story. Uh, you may have heard about it because I know you, you were trying your best to keep up with the U.S. Open as much as you could, even though you were involved in the snooker, just knowing you. But uh, did, did you hear about the Chuck Carlisle story? Uh, a friend of mine from back in the Dallas area uh, passed away very, very, very unexpectedly. Uh, about an infection, I believe it was uh, maybe a blood infection, maybe sepsis, but and passed away in a short period of time. And so he had signed up for the U.S. Open. Him and his friend Mark Oler were going to travel. And all he wanted to do was play Skylar Woodward. Uh, that's all he wanted to do because he loves Sky so much, you know. And so of course he passed away, and, and Debbie, his wife, and, and son contacted and asked if, if his son could replace him in the tournament. And he, they, of course, said yes. Quite and, rightly so, yeah. Yeah, and he, he draws Skylar Woodward first in the tournament. How great was that? Incredible. Yeah, you just can't, you just can't replace sports, can you? Divine intervention. Absolutely. Oh, watch out, cue ball. This is almost like the Billy Thorpe match to me, meaning when it was the tough shot, it's almost like it's grabbed Carlos attention like it did Billy and he didn't really miss it was a few of the ducks that really got away <laughs> right from the first match today we've seen this pattern reoccur <coughs> Anton Raga yes he won his first match 9-0 by whitewash but he did make a, a few errors but he also produced some wonderful shot making and we've just seen an example of Beardo shot making there and then the, the three ball he's out of shape yeah he was wanting to bump it but like the one ball a long one ball he made that you commented on uh, it was so not nice a shot and then missing what looked like a pretty easy two ball the very next shot and that's kind of what I mean with the travel and all that you know it's easy to, 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 to get a little lost uh, not only from match to match game to game and maybe sometimes shot to shot okay you can see the rails kind of livening up a little bit Okay, he's just got to worry about the eight a little. Wants to play this a hair thick into the rail, probably. Let that way the five comes. Uh, he played it on the thin side, and that actually could have got away from him, even if he did make the six. Yeah, he missed the six by a fraction with the five, but really, it should have been the contact needed. I don't think he can get to the left of this. He may play the six with the kiss shot if he could. With the six hanging, he really needs the snooker here, and I think he did get it. Now Carlo probably comes two rails going in between the seven, eight with the cue ball to the right long rail, coming underneath the five, trying to kind of kick and stick with a little top left English. Oh, he's going for the jump. Oh, the jump and then the cut combo. Oh, he played kiss shot. Very, very good. Nine going to get out of the way. I don't think it did, so I don't really think an offensive shot is possible. Yeah. As we told you before, over 80 Vietnamese players in the field, which is roughly a third. And you're just waiting for at least one of them to produce a big story. Maybe this is it. Well, I, like I said earlier, I firmly, is he going to get a nice rub on the nine? It's close to the snooker. I said it earlier, I, I really believe, you know, we've already produced, the Vietnam's already produced some fine players the last several years. And, uh, but I really believe in the next five or six, you're going to see a, a lot more. And, and I think the technique is going to get better. I mean, at the Perry Open, you should have seen how young the fans were. It was amazing. And, you know, you just don't come that many deep 
that quite a few of them don't play, right? Look at this. Pool's amazing. Out the speed. One ball out the center of the table. Not looking for the jump cue here. Might get action on the nine. Or the seven. I'll tell you what. He's having some luck. Can he ride it? Why not drawn this ball going forward? The three rails are inside. With that angle, you would kind of feel like he would draw the cue ball up the right side for the nine in the, in the left middle. But of course, hard to doubt any of these players there at the table. With Carlo Piado's level of skill, it seems almost unfair. If he also mines a rich vein of fortune, that's what happened in that instance, and that's why. His Vietnamese rival is again trailing by a couple. I can tell you John Mora is through 9-1 over win Huang Nat. Also a recent winner, Alexander Kazakis, 9-2 over Ali Percival of the UK. And Damien Massey has completed a 9-0 win over my fam Kong Bang. So Massey will play Mora in winner's qualification. Another winner. How often do we say this? Fedor Gorscht. 9-3 over Marvin Assis. We talk about Fedor Gorscht wins all the time, but of course now he's a member of the US Moscow Cup team. Captured by my co-commentator. <coughs> Can't wait to, to work with him some. We talked about a few things over the last few months. Just I think it's going to be a blessing for the entire team. I know I'm looking at it like a blessing. I'm looking to learn as much as I can offer <laughs> with that young man. And I'll tell you what, you got to appreciate him, how hard he works, all the time he puts in, refreshing attitude, and he just still feels like he's got a lot of ways to improve. And, uh, and that doesn't mean just consistency. That just means improvement overall. Cole was saying that his only Moscone Cup previously was the COVID edition in 2020, which was played without crowds. And he said he f might find it difficult to, to cope with the atmosphere at Alley Pali because obviously he'll get some form of stick, if you like, from the, from the home crowd. But I think he's got the temperament to cope with it. Yeah, I mean, you know, the thing is, you got to experience it. You almost got to experience a fumble here and there, which he had in 2020 without the crowd. Um, and the thing with a lot of those greats is, you know, they want it. So they're human. So they got to find that happy medium. And if you find anywhere close to that happy medium uh, at Alley Pally in the Moscone, you're doing pretty good. But he was definitely born for it, uh, you know. Okay, definitely out of sorts a little bit. Uh, he wanted to stay underneath that ball, uh, or at least that's normally how he would play it. Oh, he's like wanting to come around three rails, so even missing his mark there. I think this cuts in the side. I don't mind the shot myself. Just pull it back to the end rail. It's always a very small looking pocket from this kind of situation. He's going to go ahead and play safe. I think he's supposed to shoot at this myself. It sits nice to where the object ball will have a little turn to that outer point.
Vivo. I'll tell you one thing how this table has changed as the day has gone on, the characteristics of the table. When we did the first match this morning, Carl and I, the cushions were like lightning. They were bouncy in the extreme. They have calmed down somewhat, thankfully, because it was a really fast playing surface and the cushions were maybe even faster than the bed. Yeah, well, I think a little the air conditioning got in there, probably calmed them down a bit. That's the thing, you have to recognize when they're changing. Nice shot there. And that's the speed that the floating ball is tough that I always thought Carlo excelled at. So the former US Open and World Nine Ball champion is 66% of the way towards victory. Two thirds, he leads by six racks to three. Now, by the way, we're talking about Fedor Gorscht here. Understandably so, because his inclusion in the USA Moscow Cup team this year and in future years, of course, and I think that's the big thing, was a, a seismic story yesterday on the day he won the, the Perry Open in itself, a World Nine Ball Tour ranking event. Well, Gorscht is through to win his qualification. His next opponent will be either Masato Yoshioka or Max Eberle. Looks like possibly being Yoshioka. He's on the hill at 8-6. I tell you, Yoshioka, he, he can fool you. If you didn't know how great a player he is, uh, he just kind of quietly goes about his business when he's running out, keeps it simple, and just kind of plays into the match when I watch him play. He just doesn't really seem like he has that big of expectations, even though he does, but he just kind of lets it unfold. And I tell you, Carlos had a few mistakes, but the break overall has been pretty darn good, and that's got to be it. A nice sign for him moving forward. <laughs> Can see a little bit of the blue too, maybe a little more than I think. And he's putting the two near the nine. Now the two's going to rest on the rail along with the cue ball. So very good speed. shot is here I mean you can do a lot this is tough the way it laid yeah anytime that cue ball's in the middle of the end rail and the object ball's on the other middle end rail both near froze this isn't being harsh it's just being candid he's raw clearly isn't he and that rawness translating into a few blunders we all know what Biardo is capable of doing if he's given plenty of quality table time. Yeah, and he'll take advantage of that. Also looking forward in this tournament, not looking past his opponent. Of course, you can't win those titles having that kind of mindset. But, you know, and the thing about it is a nine ball pool, some of those little you know, intricate things in the game tactically or whatever you want to call it, they don't always come up in a match. So you'll find a player like, you know, like Nook that could win matches over a better player just because, you know, their advantage really just doesn't come up. So, and normally when you're moving along in your pool game, you actually get to where you can actually run out a little better than you can play tactically and all the other things. You know as well as I do though, Jeremy, we've done an awful lot of these major World Nine Ball Tour ranking events now, these 256 player events. And over the course of the first two days, yes, occasionally you get a massive upset, but they are still a rarity, aren't they? Yeah, they are. I'll tell you one thing we have seen though, those mild upsets have not been few and far between them. I'll tell you, the the World Nine Ball Tour has a big part to do with that, along with the better players. Those are the ones that are that are teaching these other players, uh, whether they know it or not. One of Carlo Biardo's fellow countrymen is through to the next round, Patrick Gonzalez. He's beaten 
Sharik Saeed of Singapore, 9-6. Tim De Reuter, he finds himself 5-4 up on Dang Than Kien. Moritz Neuhausen, having made a quick start against Nizam Udin, is being pegged back. Neuhausen's lead is now just 6-4. What country is that for Udin? I think it's Bangladesh. Okay. One, I met some players yesterday from Brunei, and uh, just made me remember when the Prince of Brunei played uh, the World Nine Ball Championships back in the day. It was the most incredible scene when we had group stages. So he'd come in for his group state match, and there would be like 500 people show up for that race to six or seven, depending on what format we were playing. And then it was the greatest thing ever. And as soon as he was done, psh, they'd be out the door, right? Yeah. But um, it was it was really fun to watch. And that, he played that that tournament for a good uh, about five years or so, six years. Talked to those gentlemen. They said he just doesn't play much anymore. Probably got his hands full with a ton of things. Yeah, he was the the Sultan's son, obviously, and had a very deep love of pool. Mm -hmm. At the time, he just loved going to that event and being involved. And he won the occasional match as well. Oh, he had some talent. I thought, uh, you know, if he was one of those types like we talk about with many others, if they got to got to spend a lot of time, continual time with the better players, I think uh, we'd have seen him develop into a very, very nice player. All right, overcutting the two and running the cue ball. The one thing with him, he wasn't under pressure in terms of trying to eke out some prize money. I think the 30,000 US dollar first prize here would not even register on the on the scale with him. It would be like us losing a, a dime. Yeah, what a shot here. Is he going to get in that little gap? I don't think so, but... Pretty smooth work there from Carlo, and at that time, I don't know, but was the family like the richest in the world or, or close to it? I actually saw him. He came to a, a prize giving at a European Senior Tour event, golf, um, that I was the at. Sultan or the Prince? The, the Prince. Oh, okay. yeah. And he came to this uh, prize giving at this European Senior Tour event at a hotel in Brunei called the Empire. And there's a Jack Nicholas golf course attached. It is a beautiful place. And it was a great golf tournament, actually. Um, but it was a, a fleeting visit. I wanted to say hi and speak about pool, but it was impossible to get anywhere near him. Yeah, I think I did get to shake his hand a couple times. and uh, But again, he. He wasn't one. He came in for his practice a little bit, and really played his matches, and kind of exited. And kind of understand why after seeing all the all the lines of cars that would be coming into near the venue to come see him play. He's just so loved. Like well, you when you're back in Texas, Jeremy, you've got the entourage. Oh well, yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah. Now that was a, a very good end result for Biardo. Yes, he made contact, so he gave himself a chance. But look at that seven ball doing him a massive favor. Yeah, and we'll get on with this one, but a couple times he was real close to qualifying and, you know, of course, just to do anything for the pool world, all of us were hoping he would qualify the Prince of Brunei and get into that final 64 stage. Now, that was a nice shot, cushion first from Van Trump. Not just potting the three, but retaining position on the four. What can he do here? He has to get this rack on the board because if Biardo got on the hill at A3, it would be effectively over. He's got a little angle, but he needs a hair of side spin. This is going to be over hit a bit. Actually checked up nice. I thought it was going to be another five or six inches. As we said before, this table, both surface and cushions, definitely a slow down as the day's gone on. All right. And a great.
great position now. You know, we talk about, you know, 7 4, that score, of course, there's a lead there, but in the winter break format, you know, something that you're within striking distance, that's for sure. This is where that table, I think it goes a little that way towards the right if you're watching. I think that he did overhit it a bit, but maybe that had a little something to do with him getting on top of the nine. No mistake though, although it did wipe its feet, the nine ball. He's acquitting himself with a certain amount of distinction here. He's got four racks on the board against the great Carlo Biardo, who has seven. Still waiting for victory, the Filipino. Pierre Francesco Garcia now leads James Aranas, 8-7 on table 22. The winner of that plays the winner of the match we're watching. Masato Yoshioka's lead over Max Eberle has been gradually whittled down. Yoshioka now only 8-7 up. A match to determine who plays Fedor Gorsh next. I can see him, he's at the table though, Yoshioko, so doesn't look too unhappy about it either. So we'll see if he can get that job done. You know, you were saying before about the Sultan of Brunei's son playing pool and how great it would be had he qualified from the groups all those years ago. And that's, I think, the same principle with Nayuki Oi. If he were to win a big event because of his effervescent personality I think it would be wonderful for the game so every time we come to one of these he's one of the players I would love to see do really well because I think it wouldn't be just fantastic for him as an individual it would be fantastic for pool as a collective yeah well matchroom and of course everyone involved they do I agree with you 100 percent by the way and they do such a great job with all their uh, promotions and you know the production but if you saw the promotion video for this event, uh, which they played it yesterday during the presser, um, you know, it's got oi at the very end. And I, I love the, the caption of him. And of course, he always gives the best looks. But I don't know, it's just something about it makes me feel like he's going to win this tournament. And I think it would do wonders for the sport. And we may get another one of those special interviews we haven't had in a while. And the thing is with him, folks, those interviews aren't contrived. That's, That's him. him. Yeah, absolutely. And I think at one point, you know, maybe he thought that people thought they were, so he kind of quieted them down. And he wanted to remind them, hey, I'm a nine ball player. I'm just a fun guy. That's all. A fun guy who, when he's involved in the heat of battle, is very serious indeed. Absolutely. And he gets very nervous. Yeah. Sometimes the, the shoulder comes in, you can see that happening. But that shows, it demonstrates to all of us just what it means to him. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, he's a fast player. He's an attractive player to watch. Um, but I think he's definitely there to win. I think, it, I think, uh, I think he's going to make a run this week, and it wouldn't surprise me if he takes it down. All right, very odd stretch here. Not only... A long ways, but over a ball a little bit. He's got to screw the cue ball back. Maybe stunned. We'll see. At no point in this match, with the possible exception of 4 1, has Biardo threatened to dominate. But that said, at no point in the match have we seriously thought. <laughs> Kong Trung could pull out the victory. But you never know. You never know from here, especially if Biardo continues to make uncharacteristic positional errors. Yeah, and when a shot like that happens, because that wasn't that thin, especially being that close, that means the tip came up, which is uh, one of the common mistakes. So you don't quite get as much draw on the ball, kind of slides more, doesn't grab.
great effort. Didn't want to draw the ball up the table for shape on the seven. Never really thought that door safety was coming in there, but now a return jump shot. Nook Quang. I don't like his chances. I don't know why. For some reason, I feel like he's going to knock it in. This is very difficult as well for a few reasons. Not only the six is tough, it's got to avoid the side coming back and forth for the cue ball with the cue ball. It's a very tight upper pocket. Boy, I thought it was the best news ever that Kachi was going to be here in Hanoi. I'm sure you heard about that feel. And just unfortunate, I think he had some plane issues and couldn't make the trip. He was actually at the airport, got in the air, and they turned the player plane around for some uh, engine issues and uh, could, couldn't get on another flight. It's been one of those star-crossed years for Eklund Kachi. We're all wishing him a very speedy recovery. I think that really does dent his Moscone Cup chances, but we know with his class and ability he will be back on the team at some point yeah and he's a hard worker and I truly believe he was going to move into number one in the world I know it would have to do some things in the two-year rankings uh, may have been hard to overcome overall but I think that's the direction he was heading in the way he was performing and so this nine ball from middle distance not the best positional shot again Biardo didn't really get hold of the cue ball, but this nine ball to stand on the hill. And that's what the great champions do, and he's one of those playing his best, but has the ability to knuckle down and knock in the vital balls. So Carlo Biardo doubling up on no Quang Trung. Score line reads 8 4. If Biardo can get through, he will have tomorrow off in terms of competition. We know he'll be on the practice table. Yeah, basic, I was basically, by getting to winner's qualification, he won't have to play again until Thursday. Yeah, that's how the scheduling is. The players really love it. Um, you know, either you get that first day off or you get a day off in between. I was going to comment about the practice tables. They've been nonstop packed since I got here early today. And players trying to take as much advantage as possible. The Moritz Neuhausen lead has been reduced to 6-5 over Nizam Udin. We'll keep a, a close eye on that one. Newhausen, of course, who performed with distinction alongside Joshua Filler when Germany reached the World Cup final three months ago. I wouldn't say by his standards, Carlo Biardo has performed with distinction in this match, but he's done and he's doing, it seems, <laughs> enough. Well, he's usually one that'll figure it out. I mean, we always don't play perfect. One thing he can take away from this match He's breaking the balls really well. And, you know, until we get to Saturday or Sunday in that final 16, he's probably going to play another match or two on this table, number one. And it's got to be a good feeling for that. All right, big shot here to end this match. Most likely this one will do it. The four playable. Oh, he's overcut it. Yeah, I think with Biardo, it's been two steps forward, one step back. All right, how's he play? Does he come two rails above? Does he roll into the nine, trying to hold the cue ball?
This doesn't look like the worst cross side bank to take. You can looks like you can roll by the four kind of underneath it with pocket speed on the bank and play a safe as well. You know, Fetter Gorst after that win yesterday at the Perry had some a few little interviews about things and one thing that he recognizes and the scheduling is a big part for him is he recognized he needs some rest and uh, you know I think like I said earlier the fall schedule is rough and it's one thing to play in a bunch of tournaments but you know it was Asia a few weeks ago for a lot of these players back to the U.S. for so many tournaments all over the states and then you know back to Asia again. Well, the one thing about today's pool player athlete is they do stay in shape pretty well. You know, that's got to go a bit. But you see how it keeps rolling to the right a little right there? And uh, like I said, pool tables aren't perfect. Mechanics are great, but we just got to let them settle in a little bit, and then they, they uh, kind of tweak them every night as the tournament goes on. This morning I was watching Marcel Eckhart, the referee, who does a very thorough job, and he was testing out the tables, and that was the characteristic. They were just moving to the right. Yeah. So tapering out as you're playing up the, the left-hand side cushion mm -hmm. as we're looking at the table, and basically tapering in as you're looking towards yeah. the right-hand side cushion. Yeah, I noticed it, and of course we talked about it before match number three a little bit. They said they're going to make some adjustments with that carpet. The carpet's a little thick, uh, so they'll get it right. Carlo Viado on the verge of victory. David Alcady is through on table two over Jeffrey Arada. Good win. I mean, anytime you beat a Filipino player, and I think it was uh, it looked like it was going to be a, a tough one. Do well for your confidence, even if you are a favorite. And a nice stroke. Not out of this yet. No, and his last couple of breaks weren't as good, but he started off breaking okay. So you got to feel like you'd have to sit Carlo down for a rack or two and some time to bring this, uh, to make this comeback. A warm round of applause and rightly so. The scoreline is 8-5 now. And that's the beauty of the winner breaks format. It's not to everyone's liking. I personally love it because it means that matches of this type, they retain interest there's always that hope that you can come back if this was all turn and break okay theoretically the outsider could win but he would have a very small chance he's still got a small chance but with winner breaks you have only got to catch lightning in a bottle and big things can happen yeah absolutely and you know I think winter breaks a little harder to play if we're playing on bigger pockets and the break rule isn't correct the one on the spot but I think that becomes a, makes the game a little too easy and you're not punished for your mistakes. But that's also the good thing is if you come back from here, you've earned it. By the way, as we see the table uh, center stage in this vast arena, continue David Alcady beat Jeffrey Rodder 9-4. So he now plays in winner's qualification. One of the leading Filipino players win Antoine. Yeah, that should be a really good match. Tuan, who kind of struggled, you know, like you said on this table, we did the commentary with his match the second in the second round. Really shorted up in the next match, and it's going to be a heck of a one winner's qualification for not only our last, uh, well, not our last one, but one of our major winners this year, that being David Alcady, but a home countryman and win Antoine. I'll tell you, here's that break. He's got a great shot on the two. He made it. Got a lot of work with the six, seven, eight later. Probably got a little thinner on this three than he really wanted. So 
but just got to make sure pay attention yeah i was going to say it's the type of shot when you're coming backwards with the cue ball to a, on a froze ball easy to pull it off that side rail and when one of the game's finest finds himself on the hill and the opposition misses a ball like that there's always the chance it could be their last shot of the match now these balls aren't ideal you can see the, the green six and the seven don't shape up too nicely but Biardo with his mastery and his trickery and his knowledge could find a solution yeah I thought he made duck on that three ball had a really chance to really sew him up behind the six seven and maybe open the six up a little bit so you don't want to get in a position where you're taking a real chance with an ugly rack even as great as Carlo is and eight five it's definitely striking distance now is this too thin to maybe open the seven up a little bit while trying to gain position you right, open the eight real smart yeah the channel is partially unblocked in terms of that six major stumbling block is the seven of course yeah but what happens there is you really open up the safety opportunity on the six to knock it around the table now that the eights moved uh, they just got to make one nice draw stroke here to get in that position and you can tell right there like if he was the cue ball in a real good position maybe the six is he going three rails with inside Trying to oh, he just drew it watch out Tell you what, we will not see a ball go closer to scratching without doing so than that all week. That was, I was going to say, a millimeter away. It might have been less than a millimeter. That yeah. was almost in. Yeah, and it was real deep in there. I think this is cuttable now that he's gotten in that position we talked about. Well, we surmised it might possibly. Trung's final shot. He missed the pot earlier. It was back. Still in there punching. Yeah. He wanted to come up on the seven, trying to eliminate the jump shot. That's why you saw a little grimace from Nope. Equipment with the jump cues are so incredible these days. And back in the day when I played, we had jump cues you know, for the most part. But when they got real close, it's just still your big underdog to get over it. Yeah, just caught the the seven ball en route. So from here, I'm drunk should get back to only two racks behind with a possible three to play and from there anything can happen yeah we've already seen a little action on the nine ball with a few of these break offs uh, don't think he was trying to play for the corner but he actually fell real nice as it was approaching the hole but should be all right Got to go for the extension If you'd said to me, no, Quang Trung will get six racks here, do you think that's possible? I would have said no, no chance. Emphatically, no. I would have been entirely incorrect. 
still waiting for the victory is Carlo Biardo. If he does limp across the line, we know who he will play in winner's qualification. And what a spicy match it will be. It will be his fellow Filipino, James Aranas, who, having been in trouble for most of the match against Pierre Francesco Garcia, has edged it by nine racks to eight. And another matchup has come to the fore. Sato Yoshioka has beaten Max Eberle 9-7. So Yoshioka will play Fedor Gorscht in winner's qualification. Moritz Neuhausen, he had a, a wobbly spell in mid-match, but he's come through 9-5 against Nizam Udin. Tim De Reuter and Dang Thankien locked together at seven racks each. So some good contests going on all around this vast arena. Yeah, and we expect the second round to heat up, but I really think it has a little bit to do uh, with the tables being pretty tough for day one. And what happens is even the best players, if you you know you're clearing five, four or five balls, you get a little out of line. You know, you hang a ball or make a mistake with just uh, a few apples left on the table. It's easy for you know an underdog to start getting a little confidence, put a put a few balls down and a few, a few beads on their side. His shot on the two here probably wants to bank the one into the six so he can hold the one for position after kicking it, kissing the two in. All right, a little unlucky not to have that much speed on the cue ball and came all the way down table. Wow. And see, that's what happens when these shots, these matches kind of linger. Things start to go a little funny. Watch out for the scratch. This ball may not get to the side rail. Wow. Right now, Viado's got only one emotion, relief. He wasn't sure, was he, as the, the cue ball came back towards him? He wasn't sure. No, not at all. And see the players wiping the cues down quite a bit. A little sticky in here right now. Not going to be the one that he wants. Now here it is for Carlo. Of course, can't overlook any table. I don't think. A lot of work. Demanding one ball. I wouldn't say super difficult, but it is demanding. I like him doing this here. Going to look. Here come two rails. Not really try to get any closer to the three. Just back and forth across. Enough angle, probably draws over between the five nine. You could go forward. There's enough angle to do so, but I don't see any point in dealing with the traffic. He is going to go forward. Inching ever closer to the tree. You know he's got the temperament to get over the line. Has he got the form? Well, he seems surprised that the four ball is hung there. I'm not surprised at all. No, not at all. I mean, you now I walked around between matches and I've seen bunches of ball. Hung. <laughs> Hanging in the pockets, and I've seen it on this table quite a bit as well. And tell you what, he's in really good position. It's an odd six ball near the side. Not sure if it's really playable in the side pocket. I don't think it is. And if it's not, he's going to have a little difficulty getting from the six to the seven, especially. It'd be easier to play it in the long pocket, a six, that being the six, and getting across for the seven. Tell you what, this is getting more interesting every minute. Uh, I kind of let up on it a little bit there. Yeah, that's the that's the thing you need a, a smooth cue delivery, but under pressure, they become increasingly more and more difficult. Yeah, 
It's a pretty smart play. Trying to use the eight and the nine. You hear the applause. Getting down on this. Is he going to hit this real, real hard? Wow. He's got to go, or else he's going to leave a pretty easy shot. The international campaign of the international champion, and it's Carlo Biardo. If you just think about his game here, he's kept it simple. He's played pretty solid, knocking, knocking in the balls. And I think tactically, you know, he's done a ton of that in this match, but there's been some, and he's been okay. Remember, Biardo led 4 1, he led 6 3. Now, though, his lead is two balls away from being reduced to only 8 7. Maybe a little awkward stretch for the right hander. Anytime you're coming from the corner with the body, you know, it can, it can be a bit of a stretch. possibility of a major upset remains intact it is 8-7 now for Biardo and of course the outsider gets to break in Rack 16 yeah, he had a great break off in the last really thought uh, he may have a chance to clear the table now you got to believe that this young man if he gets a little chance he may feel the pressure but I guarantee you Carlo will feel the pressure much closer to match than what we feel it should have been. Yeah, absolutely. If you're wondering what our final stream match today is, well, I think these two will have expected to have been on the table a little earlier than this, but they're having to wait. Mind you, it's worth the wait. The last match is Li Kun Fang of Chinese Taipei against First round. Seems these push outs always come up in these close matches, and here's one in game number 16. Is he thinking about not playing the push out? I'll tell you what, looking at a rail first that will bring the cue ball across. Tables are playing tough, so we'll see if. Don't, don't really feel like he'll hang. I don't really feel like he'll hang the two ball, but I think fairly smart shot taking it on. And look where that's.
cue ball has come to rest in behind the four. Yeah, and that's what I was saying about the uh, taking on the kick instead of the rollout. You know, cue ball is heading in that direction, so. All right, he's knocked the four down by the five. May make things a little easier to get on the six. And we're just a step away from a hill hill match, kind of from nowhere. We were saying earlier on, weren't we, Jeremy, about the early play in these major ranking events that you do occasionally see a shock, but they don't exactly come along regularly. I think this would be one of the biggest shocks we've seen since the inception of the World Nine Ball Tour. Yeah, absolutely. A, a proper one, <laughs> as the English like to use that word, proper. Yeah, definitely. I mean, maybe who was it that beat FSR in that UK Open? That, that was a big one. It was, and he was 6-0 down in his second match, yeah, wasn't he? And yeah. came back to win that and got to the final. So all is not lost, even if you are defeated here. But it would be a shaker for Carlo Biardo as the cue ball stops just in the nick of time. Now here's the the jaw of the middle pocket in the way to get to the red three from his reaction from his body language you'd say yes yeah the threes a ways out there though and the ones the cue ball's not up, up against the point so usually you would have a shot sometimes you can almost talk yourself out of that the way the ball sits in those side pockets well the way he knocked it in in the end he was overly dramatic wasn't he yeah and i think he was kind of wondering how it got away from him to begin with trying to think of bigger upsets we've had on tour early stages I mean he's a very capable player I actually got to play with some pool with him last week in London uh, Phil Wildman beat Alvin Ocean this year at the UK Open but I mean Phil is a very good cueist though and I think you'll see him back out here on the World Handball Tour but Alvin Ocean of course being you know, that type of ranked player like a highly rated player like just like Carlo Biotto Looks like he may have to stun this across between the eight and nine, and it doesn't look too bad. I think if he goes forward, he's got to really have good speed. Yeah, I like that shot right there. I don't see anything but Hill Hill now. a little more out of that. This result, if no were to win it, would really energize for the tournament on day one. A local coming good against an international winner of the very biggest events. Well, just listen to this nine he's about to make and a little applause. Well, just imagine if he makes the last nine in this match. Crowd really into this, and rightly so. Big smile on the face of no. I'll tell you what, at the end of this rack, no could be saying yes. Yeah, absolutely. And Carlo Beato about the only one not smiling in this massive arena. Again, just to remind you, uh, the Vietnamese player was 4 1 down, he was 6 3 down, and Biardo was on the hill at 8-5, but three racks in succession mean it's going down to the wire. Yeah, and there was a little sweat there with the cue ball on that second shot. May have gotten away with a little something getting on the three, but capable breaker, and we'll see what happens here in the case game. 
one thing we could say for certain this is the biggest rack of no Quang Trung's life and it's a pretty big rack for Carlo Biardo he doesn't want the, the stress and the strain and the the toil of being on the one loss side no absolutely and it's you know we talked about it earlier all these players they want to win all three but they really want to win those first two that's the real goal because then you got to only win one out of your next two to get to that final 64. They want to go in there undefeated percentages say you draw a little easier but you know, if you lose this match I think he's got to win three matches I believe may only be two but three matches to get into that final 64. Broken got a shot. Really all about this first one ball, of course, to get things started, but you see the two should be there. Well, Carlos feeling good. He may not come away with a shot, but he's feeling good that he is gonna come to the table. Snookered. Are they going to be the short cue trying to knock it in the corner and draw the cue ball? Had a foul earlier in the match with the jump cue. I like the kick, yeah, myself. Yeah, that's how you want to go. You want to go a little deeper, draw the ball. That way you can come maybe backwards with the cue ball, have some type of safety option. Just in case you don't knock a one in that corner. Hello, very, very good at hitting his mark on the rail. I'm trying to get a portion of the one. Caught it full, so the cue ball's down here. One's going to stay close. All you want in a decided is an opportunity. Here is the chance. Yeah, and the first one, tell is pretty nervous. He settles in on this one. I don't know if he'll make the whole clearance, but I think he will get it down and get shape. Watch out. Watch out for that lower right corner. Oh, he got awfully straight, so the two shouldn't be a problem unless he tries to do a bit too much, but the three is going to be difficult no matter. confidence there I, you know a lot of people say let me not bobble the two and make sure I get a shot on the three but he went ahead and played it aggressive and got the cue ball for real and really may serve him well for trying to finish this round I think the five goes by the nine so you want to roll forward a little bit make sure you can reach this and gain a nice natural angle for the pink four to get to the back side of the purple five side you can tell all the fans are nervous for him as well getting me a little nervous there Phil Boy, what a shot here though to elevate and take that on it is such a gargantuan scalp to beat Carlo Biardo anywhere in any tournament is a real feather in the cap but to do it on home soil in front of plenty of folks who are willing you on. It's a memory that for him would never fade. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're at all these World Nine Ball Tours and I, I talk to a lot of the, the top players and of course you say top players, but you know, top 40, 50 guys. And they talk about beating guys like Carlo Obiato like a feather in their cap. And some of them never beat him. And, uh, 
So for this young man in his home country and a lot of fans and family probably sweating and what a win this would be. Let's see if he can finish. Tell you what, he's not shy of shooting him in with some speed. He's just fine here. He's just going to have to go to the top rail and back down a little bit. Oh, he's a little more elevated over the line than I imagined. Is it enough speed, though? It sure is. It sure is, Bill. I think that was Win on Tom and they're sweating the match as well. Could be a bit of a mentor, you never know. Just two shots away from one of the biggest shocks we've seen in World Nine Ball Tour history. And surely, surely the outsider isn't going to miss this. In the end, it is a big yes for the man they call No. No, Quang Trung has beaten Carlo Biardo. Not just a victory, but a comeback victory. And his lowest derby was 4-1 down. He was 6-3 down. And then Biardo got on the hill at 8-5. But No simply refused to capitulate. In the end, he wins 9-8. He will now play James Aranas in winner's qualification and the road to the title for Biardo is now strewn with obstacles as Jeremy said he has to win three matches on the one loss side now to make it to single elimination last 64 are we going to lose one of the game's giants that's not the concern of no though he is through and that is the story of day one of the Hanoi nine ball open championship without any question whatsoever.